Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's talk a little David and Joku because we've we we discussed it a little bit off air, and there's a little bit of a mixed uh, feelings around the room, perhaps. So uh, I'm I'm in camp. Let's go get David and Joku. You guys agree? Well, this is this is given to what we've been talking about. One of the things that you can say about the Browns is they got a talented roster. Mm-hmm. Offensively, defensively, and if you just pay attention to what's happening here, you got basically you're running an RB one out there each and every week and name and high high volume as Carlos Hyde. You got Duke Johnson and Nick Chubb just basically waiting in the wings for needed action, needed deployment. They're just hanging out, gassed up, ready to go. And now all revved up with no place to go, nowhere to go. Me, and oh, now baby. you got David and Joku over here, who's Again, the dude is, what, 22 years old, just turned 22 a couple months ago. He's an athletic freak. He had really good flashes on limited opportunity last year, and then he goes and explodes in the preseason. I think he got 20 balls and four touchdowns last year, maybe? Okay. Something like that. Ridic- like, not, then, yeah. His touchdown rate was high on his right. catches. P- touchdown per catch. I see where you're going with that. But, like, his preseason – Looked incredible. Had two in one game. Exactly. And it was a, the David and Joku show. Yep. From both quarterbacks. From both right. quarterbacks. And then the pre- regular season gets here and three for 13, four for 20, two for 36. Which sounds like a fair amount of tight ends I've been fucking with. So. Right. Well, tight end, tight end hasn't been easy. Right. And there's no doubt about it. But the thing about it, what you were talking about on air when we started discussing Njoku is the love for Njoku is real. It's just the production is the lack of it is real too. So right. if you go out and try to buy in Joku, you're buying somebody who probably, I mean, I'd much rather start Jared cook every week. You know what I mean? Like you, you have to buy, if you're buying in Joku, you're going to have to give up somebody who's worth a starting spot for somebody who's going to sit on your bench. And we talked about that in draft season for startups about buying in Joku to be on your team. It was buying him to put people like that. You buy him and you put him on your bench and, and you know, you know that he's solid. You know he's got the all the potential in yep. the world, but potential ain't gonna win you nothing in fantasy football. And you know that's that's the thing. It's like I don't mind buying in Joku. I just think, but when he starts producing, you ain't gonna be able to afford it, right? So once he scores his first touchdown in the regular season and beats the dude after the catch, then it's gonna be like, oh man, I, now I can't I can't attain him. And 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 maybe if. If this is a new dynasty league you're in and that startup happened this year and you had to pay a premium to get him on your team, you had to use a high pick on him, you had to spend a bunch of money in an auction, maybe that owner's not going to be wanting to give him up because he really loves him because he had to pay a ton to get him. Well, there's two different owners for startups this year. There was the one before the preseason game and there was the one after the preseason game because after the preseason game was double the price. Right, but it was already really high. It was. But maybe maybe it's a, a, a league that's already established and they got him in a rookie draft last year at a certain point where it was just like, okay, I heard all these tight ends are good. Let me get one of them. I kind of need a tight end. And now you've had him for a year and three games, and you haven't seen a bunch of return on your investment. And and now's the time to pounce if you if you couldn't pay the premium before. I'm not saying sell the farm to get him or give up an awesome piece, but I'd be giving up something decent to get him. I mean, I, I'm, right. now's the time to at least try and stab. Right. So this is there's some things working in your favor for Njoku mostly all being Baker Mayfield right? and what where Baker Mayfield likes to attack on the field and who Baker Mayfield likes to throw to. Mark Andrews Crushed is a product it. of Baker Mayfield. I'm not saying that obviously he didn't make Mark Andrews. Mark Andrews is his own guy, but, but Baker Mayfield him made defi- him Madden. <laughs> definitely elevated uh, Mark Andrews stock some and Mark Andrews is paying dividends to the Ravens right now. I think he's a good player as well, right? Um, but he got a Baker loves to hit that slot, loves to have an athletic wide receiver or a, uh, tight end kind of playing the wide receiver position so there's definitely drilling that seam some and you saw it right off the rip toward as, soon as Baker up. came in right to Njoku second play I think right and first and play maybe hit, first play well he hit Landry on the first play up like in the middle of the right. field and then hit Njoku in the middle right. of the field the very next play so it's then he fumbled but they two got plays straight up the seam you're hoping this elevates what you've been you're you're hoping that this unlocks what you were waiting for with Njoku I'm I think for me personally, with what exactly what Big Co said of of what I have to give up right now to get him, because I think I have to give up a good starter to put him on my bench and and hopefully wait for this to happen. He's I, still twenty two, right? No, no, I know he's he's really young. Second I'm, year, he's there's, still developing. He's still learning how to and play. There's nothing wrong with that. And normally, I'm all I love grabbing a guy and developing him because 
of what I saw in my evaluation. I'm just not 100% sold on having to give what just it really depends on what I'm giving up to get Njoku and I, yeah. he's just not somebody that I don't, I'm going necessarily after maybe it's dumb right now maybe I should be for all the reasons that I just said obviously he's a really athletic guy awesome and, dude off the field well, here, here's, hard worker exactly well here's the deal if you like Jason Smart said shit. if you got Njoku in the rookie draft last year and it was like maybe he was the last tight end taken and not the first Some, one. Right, if somewhere you, in the if, second round. If you just took him because he was the last of one of those tight ends that you're quote-unquote supposed to take, right. then maybe he's gettable. But if that owner got him this year, then he paid. Then he right. he yeah. wanted David and Joku. Right. right. Like there's, you're not gonna pry David and Joku away for anything less than high retail value from anybody that purchased him going into this year because they paid the do- David and Joku price for somebody that wasn't even startable and obviously after the per- first week of the preseason you thought he was going to be startable but then life hits you in the face and you're like oh preseason and regular season two different things right and defensive schemes players playing a lot yeah. of different factors but i mean i just i just want to come on here and say on record that i feel a david and joku explosion coming very soon and after that then he's pretty much going to be unattainable. Sure. So. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, it only takes one game for to have an explosion. Af- ask Calvin Ridley. But the thing about it is, is in this game, when Baker Mayfield came in there, they were playing from behind. They needed to throw the ball. And Antonio Callaway and, and Jarvis Landry put 25 targets between the two of them. Mm-hmm. You know, so. Well, and, and, that's, and, that's, and that's, that's on the fly thing now. That's sure. not like, hey, we had a week of prep. Baker's coming in now. Let's get his tight end involved like he wants and to that play. Gives me, that, that, that helps give me some pause. You came to him right away and you thought, maybe that he would be a little bit bigger of an emphasis of what for Baker for the rest of this ball game. I didn't necessarily see it. It's one game. It's a half of a game, essentially. Right. And Njoku didn't have any targets from Tyrod and Tyrod right. was targeting Callaway and Jarvis plenty before we left. Yeah, I, it's, it comes down to what I what I have to pay for him. I mean, as per usual, there's some guys like right now, I'll give you whatever, you know, I'm, I'll overpay for carry on Johnson right now because I want him on all my teams. Um, but I'm not. I'm not necessarily willing to overpay for Najoku. Yes, just because I. I haven't. There hasn't even like you've you've seen a little bit of a shimmer here and there, but I haven't seen like something to be like okay. There, well, there it is exactly because if David and Joku was to blow up next week, there's nothing that says it's necessarily sustainable to affect your lineup for the next couple of weeks unless he comes out there. We've and seen OJ Howard go up way up and here down. and then then uh, people wanted nothing to do with oj howard in this off season and now oj howard's becoming you know well, he followed up he followed one game up where he had like one long play for a touchdown with another game with some with some steady production in, right in a which is of, easily of, something that joku could do with right. mayfield in this system and he and his skill personal skill set but like you're saying you re- you're ready to overpay for carry on johnson to get him on your team because it could be very you know plug and play not take him out of your lineup. And I'm the wrong guy to ask because I'm not a huge tight end guy. Yeah. Like, well, most people aren't. Most people. Well, this, some people will be like, well, I really need to do something about this tight end position. I just chalk it up as let me. <laughs> yeah. Like, Casey doesn't sweat like, out. I'm not going to sweat this because everyone else is pretty much in my same position yeah. outside of well, three guys. Maybe. And, yeah. Right. But I think Joku and, could elevate sure, himself into that sure. realm. I mean, he's just so young and raw and talented and hardworking and big and physical and a specimen. I just, but now it, he's got a quarterback that likes to Can he come alive the in the sure. red zone? I get, yeah, well, that. But also, the part of the reason why you, you got to like, you really, really got to like the outlook for Carlos Hyde moving forward is part of the reason why it might not be. The upside might not be there for Njoku unless he scores eight touchdowns the rest of the way out because. They're going to lean on the running game with Carlos Hyde, and they got target magnet Jarvis Landry, and Callaway looks like an absolute stud. Yeah. And Higgins is not a pretend wide receiver. That man can play ball. Right. So, you know, so, and maybe they throw it to Duke Johnson every once in a while. Right. Just maybe. Just so maybe. I think to close up, I think it's a wise move to go test the market for Najoku and see, see what's what, to see which owner and how they feel a certain way. Maybe somebody's trying to get rid of him. Maybe they're not. Maybe somebody that I don't like as much on my teams that the Najoku owner likes a lot and I could package up or what would you, would you sell them? Like what, I'm dang what would it take, ready what would it take for you to let go of them? I'm almost ready to move like do a one for one swap. Not quite because I feel like I could get more for it, but move Evan Ingram for, for Njoku. Like not Ooh. that someone's going to do me, me, someone would probably give me that. Oh, like, I'll, I'll get, if I had Evan, if I had Njoku, I'd give it to you for Evan Ingram. 
I, I can't make I that trade straight up, but I'm, I'm not. It's not too far off. I mean, Evan Ingram hasn't done much for you, and then he just got hurt. And well, obviously, he didn't do he's much. hurt right this second. He didn't geez. do. He hasn't done a ton this year. He's had like one good game, and it's true. Then they got Saquon and OJ, OBJ back in there, so it, I don't think it's too far. I don't think we're too far away from these two guys being on an even playing field as far as everyone's concerned. Right. And you have always had to pay a high premium for David and Joko. I'm just saying that right now it's not quite as high. Well, I mean, I'm and I've never like again, I I couldn't understand the Evan Ingram thing. Like I I understand the targets and I understand all that. Evan Ingram maybe feels a little safer to me to to spend some money on than David and Joku, but Maybe not. I think I think I might be with you. I think I would rather have the raw upside of what David Njoku brings. That's it. Exactly. That's to, it's the raw upside versus Evan Ingram was a lot more. You got Baker what, Mayfield, who's a younger guy, could grow with Njoku. You got Eli, who's probably at the end of his career, and I think Sterling Shepard and uh, Saquon and Odell is going to demand his thing. You know, no, I, 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 I was never a big again back to the tight end thing for me. Like I was never gonna pay what you needed to pay for Evan Ingram. I thought it was ridiculous. Right, not well, this year. I'm sure. not. I can't argue with you about the target demand outside of Evan Ingram in New York with Saquon and Odell, and I'm I'm a, you, you know the um, Sterling Shepard. I can't argue with that either. But Casey just said it. It's the raw upside of Njoku versus. Evan Ingram played a lot more wide receiver in college. Like Evan Ingram came into the NFL ready to run around and do more with his with route running and be a wide receiver, which is what you want out of your tight end. But I mean, I don't. I think if you line them both both up, David and Joku is a the purest raw talented. Like I don't. I don't, I want to I get mean, away. The metrics from, are better. Well, with yeah, Ingram, but, but let me say that I want to get away from calling athleticism talent. Yeah, like sure. at, Antonio Brown's the most talented wide right. receiver in the league. His and spider Julio, chart looks terrible. Julio is the most athletic wide receiver in the league. There's two different. De- I don't. You're just because you can run fast. That's not a talent. Yeah, that's we'll a, ask, that's being an athlete. Ask John Ross about that. Right. Okay. So yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I think David and Joku might be the most athletic tight end in the league, but I think that there's more skills coming out of Evan Ingram right now. But if the ta- if the targets are spread around just the same and there and there's the start abilities kind of up in there because OBJ and, and Saquon are getting 25 targets every game, I can see that that should, if you're going to middle that production and you'd rather have Njoku, I can see the Evan Ingram thing. But How about like Hunter Henry and a two for Njoku all day? What is that too easy? What are you, you giving or you taking? I mean, I what, whichever end you want to be on, I don't know. Is I that, would, is that not, think, that's not enough. Yeah, I, I I would take the Hunter Henry in a two. Uh, see, I think you're you're way on the other way. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah that's a great trade then. All great right. trade because both people are happy. I'll take I'll take Hunter Henry in a second rounder. And I like what Joker. I've seen from Hunter. Obviously, he's hurt right now. Well, yeah, bummer. you don't like the but you get the, the seconds to wake up for the to make up for the injury <laughs> right now. Yeah, yeah. I'll just go pick up Joe Schmo and play my tight end position for the rest of the year, which I'm not starting to Joku anyway. So you probably have another tight end. There you go. Right. Anyway. Let's move on. Fun, fun, fun trade. Fun talk, trade. Talk, talk about these trade. receivers and then lay Cleveland down to rest. 